Previously on Talk That Talk. We all, the first thing people want to call them is Uncle Toms and stuff like that. I don't agree with that. I don't like using that terminology anyway. But like you said, Portia, jumping to what you said, we can't even agree to disagree anymore with our own people. We'll, we'll, we, we've gotten to a point now, y'all, where people take disagreement as a personal attack. Like we're at a point now in history, y'all, and, and we're, you know, this show is about band, but we just need to talk about being black people. We're at a point now in the history of our culture remember, where remember yeah. that the show, we, as I say that at the beginning of the show, we talk about everything, music, yeah. music education and more. So you right on time. Keep going. Yeah. I think it's, we're at a point in our history as black people where we, the reason why all these things that you and Portia said are relevant is because we don't have a, a linear vision for our people. We fall like I did, Quan. That's how I that uh, what you were talking about with the um, the history of desegregation in the country. That was how I started the doctoral program. I was initially going to write about the effects of desegregation on HBCU band programs. That was what my paper was going to be about, and I changed it because I wanted to actually be able to get a job, which ties right back into what you're saying. Because as soon as you start talking about other band programs and things that's happened, we're gonna hate on you. Oh, no, nope, you can't get a job here. No. And then we we already talked about this on the show, too. Oh, man, if you ain't go to this school, like if you're not an alumnus of this school, you can't do the job. You know, I'm like, it's, it's just so many things out there, y'all, that we fall into that are directly related to just things of being black people. So I think at the end of the day. We can have these conversations as much as we want until we come up with some type of linear vision for what the direction of our people is. And it doesn't have to be every single person agreeing. Just we can agree that these are the things that are in the best interest of black people. And that may be impossible. You know, like it may be impossible. You know, so a lot of people think they know what's best for us. But all I'll say I'll end here is just portion from what you were saying to Quan to what you were saying. These issues are so much larger than music. And I think that to assume that we can address them through music is a mistake. And then going back to what I said earlier, I think that bands do, people do bump for protecting what they in particular uh, deem to be important. So, but I'm, I'm going to just, but if, but if we're learners, just, you don't have to be a formal educated person to understand this comment. Like, but we don't see other people talking about they people like that. Like you've never seen like all jokes aside, bro. And and I think, and I'm going to just have to say this for years being in Louisiana, if something really happened at Southern band wise, you never heard about it. You never heard, you never heard about it. If it was some type of mess or anything went on, allegation, whatever it may be, you never heard about it. However, now it's already posted in some pages and screenshotted before you even get out of band practice. But you're not speaking about that's not about loyalty. That's about social media. Like that's an aspect, y'all, that we're never going to be able to get rid of. No, no, no. But, but, what, but what I'm saying was it wasn't even people like. OK, take social media out of it. Like, but people didn't even talk about what was going on. But what and, I'm saying, but I think you missed what I'm saying, bro. And I don't mean to cut you off. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. what, I, what I'm what I'm trying to say, and let me be very clear here, is that. If social media was around in the 1980s with some of the stories I didn't heard that they come out of Southern from some of the people I know that went there in the 80s, 90s, 2000s. Trust me, that shit would have been on social media. It's a lot of things that happen. You know what I'm saying? One of my favorite stories of all time was the Dr. Greg story about uh, uh, the cup of water. Julie, I'm sure you remember that story. Like we were told a cup of, the cup of water story and it was, uh, you know, nobody is bigger than the band. And I think that ties into what you're saying, Gwan. Nobody is bigger than the band. You can be the best musician that, at the ever great Southern University. You ain't bigger than the jukebox. And I think that, but I think it's a mistake, Juan, to assume that because it didn't happen 20, 30 years ago, 
that it wouldn't have happened if those kids had the same resources that these kids had. I didn't get my first cell phone to my junior year. So let me ask you, so not to cut you off, but let, so let me ask you this question. And because you're you're more deeper in that this world than I, from my perspective and my optics, I don't see, and I know they do it behind closed doors, but not on a wide scale media platform. Do you feel that the blue coats would downplay the blue devils or like, and like, and I mean in a derogatory manner, would they basically shit talk about them? In 2003, the blue devils were riding around the country. And this is a true story. They were riding around a country in the front window of their bus. And my, I got a bunch of friends that were in Blue Devils, so I don't mind telling this story. And they get, they probably corroborated. In the front re- window of their horn bus, they had put duct tape on the window to say FTC squared. FTC in a small two. FTC squared means fuck the cadets and fuck the cavaliers. Oh. They had that in their um, window the whole summer. When The Rock did that drum corps um, show a couple of years ago, mm-hmm. it was the uh, Blue Devils and Blue Coats were like the main focus of that television show. One of their members on camera, we walked past. Uh, everybody know I taught Blue Coats for eight years. We walked past, and one of the members on the show was like, I don't like them dudes. Like, that competitive inertia is there, man. The difference is... It's not to a point where I hate you because you're a part of the other organization. There are people, Quan, and Julian argues with me all the time, but I still, I'm going to stand by this. Portia, I hope you back me up. Maybe you disagree too. I know one person in particular. I ain't going to put his name out on the air. He hates with every fabric of his being Hampton University. He cannot stand that band. And that rivalry from some of them old Norfolk people is there. I hate you. 